Hello adventurers and welcome to the club. Today this is the first episode of what I call Cryptid Talk. Yeah, and I want to start this off with something very very big concerning Bigfoot. You know, big and Bigfoot? <laughs> kind of fitting, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, but first let me show you this little jewel here. A new toy, a vintage dagger. There will be a separate video showing this. So, let's go right to the topic. Knock on wood. Because we are talking about tree knocks. Yeah. And why I'm personally very skeptic about tree knocks, because it is actually uh, quite a new phenomenon, but it has come, become so mainstream that all people are like, oh yeah, Bigfoots and tree knocks are one of the same thing. But if you ask me, the best chance to encounter a Bigfoot is to do exactly what you are not supposed to do in the woods. Cause Normally they say, go out there and make as much noise as possible so you don't encounter a bear. Yeah, and what's true for bears, in my opinion, is also true for Bigfoots. And that's why all those very ambitious uh, yeah, guys out there and girls uh, trying to find one, never encounter one. Because eh, first thing they do when they go out is they take up some log and they make some knocky knocky knockies and yeah i think that's actually quite the opposite of what you should do you should also never carry a firearm because well a nice little story um my brother has a dog and this dog loves me and i was one day working in my garage uh, quite a while away and guess who came yeah Without ever knowing that this garage even exists, the dog found it, because <laughs> he smelled me. Yeah, and it wasn't, it wasn't just because I haven't taken a shower. <laughs> no, it was because this dog has a very good sense of smell. And that's a golden retriever, not a hunting dog or something. Actually, a golden retriever is a hunting dog, yeah. But it is not uh, like a bloodhound. So if this dog, living in a city can find me i'm pretty sure any kind of bigfoot is able to smell your firearm yeah and another fun thing i had an encounter with a police sniffing dog and he did not find my firearm because i did not use the conventional oil for cleaning yeah i didn't have the stuff i just used normal kitchen or sewing machine oil or something like this and dog didn't find it <laughs> i later showed them and said yeah <laughs> dog didn't do a good job yeah but he didn't he didn't find it so i think if you go out there you should go unarmed i know that sounds problematic especially as you're doing the thing you do uh, when you encounter bears so it's always a bit of a thing. I say, if you have to carry a firearm, take a small firearm with you, put some coffee into it, uh, next to it, put it in two Ziploc bags and store it away in your backpack. Leave your backpack out in the garden for a few weeks in a trash, ca trash bag, so it loses the city smell. Never use washing detergent or something like this. But yeah, that's how you or how I plan to encounter a Bigfoot. I should have cleaned this mess up here a bit now. At least you see that I have a lot of books. <laughs> yeah, I see this. Yeah, I don't have a fancy background, but I don't care. Yeah, that's my opinion about those tree knocks. Cause yeah, I think it's more scaring them, scaring them away. And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe. Tree knocks are related to Bigfoot, but we don't know in which way they are related. They are maybe some kind of a territorial, hey, like I'm knocking here, 
go away kind of feel you know could be a warning could be a hey there's a hunter with a rifle knock knock and so you're warning them each time you go out there so yeah huh. I'm skeptical about very skeptical about tree knocks and I really know a lot of people strongly believe in such things but until proven yeah and also that's another very interesting uh, thing as a phenomena I touched on this uh, before tree knocks are not that old if we go back to yeah like the 70s and 80s like the Ivan Marx days there were no tree knocks nothing so yeah it's it's like a late 90s early 2000s phenomena i don't even know when exactly if you know um when this whole tree knocking thing started let me know but uh, yeah it's to me uh, it was always a new thing like this is like something that came up with those um, those um, tv documentaries about bigfoot you know the kind of um, phony kind of monster hunter tv shows where they each time have a real big success at the end and just are so close to prove it mm, yeah you know this kind of tv show that's doku soap stuff let's call it like this i call it tv diarrhea because watching this for a longer time is like being forced to eat diarrhea with a spoon yeah this video goes up with traffic i i'm not a fan of reality tv that's just the lowest uh, quality trash and my face looks a bit red here because from the camera i have a better light here i was too lazy to install it now it's a really fancy ring light sidetrack here a bit let me plug this in and activate it see how we can improve it here no oh, bright glowing orb around me we can dim it down a bit we can i think we have a special yeah we can make it a bit more yellow a bit more bluish i gotta play around with this but it's a it's a good way thing here oh wait a minute i can't resist oh, holy saint <laughs> okay enough of this <coughs> don't plug me it's for the next video yeah but yeah okay sidetrack and <laughs> tree knocks are in my opinion something that we should be very careful uh, with. Uh, you shouldn't dismiss them uh, completely, but we should be uh, skeptical. Because I think they are too much accepted into Bigfoot lore nowadays. And with all of those things, we don't know it. Sure, some people have something knocking in the woods, but <laughs> who tells uh, that this isn't, isn't just some other hiker who thinks, hey, Bigfoot is knocking at me, I'm knocking back. And so there are two guys out there trying to catch Bigfoot, knocking on trees to each other. And while <laughs> this happens, Bigfoot is sitting on a tree stump and laughing his ass off. <laughs> He's like, strange. This wood knocks, they must be related to those city folks coming into the woods hunting after us. Hmm. <laughs> At least they are nice enough to warn us. <laughs> I don't know, this may piss off a lot of uh, Bigfoot guys out there, but hey, I'm one of you, but I'm a bit skeptical about this phenomena. I have my doubts. At least I am planning to do a Bigfoot expedition in the future. Uh, this will be one of the things I try to avoid. Yeah, I want to be as stealth as possible. Best thing is to maybe, I say, fly in with a water plane. Jump out of the plane and leave the gear there for a while. A few months. And then I will return with the expedition 
and start uh, the work. For the same thing, I'm also working on a reliable, ultra cheap trail cam that gets recharged with solar, so it is able to operate for years, or at least for a year. Don't know how good it will uh, survive the winter and snow and the solar panel and so on, but let we will see how good it holds up. But it will be a well, a probably around forty to fifty dollar solution. Maybe even cheaper if I buy in bulk. So that means we can really start the recording out there for a longer time. Motion activated. So this could help a bit. And my laptop is going into standby here. Uh, <laughs> now blasting me with <laughs> blue light. Okay. Uh, I think this was about 10 minutes or so now. It's a good length to end the video. And this is an open discussion here. I really like to read your opinion about Trinox. Do you believe in them or do you disbelieve in them? Are you skeptical or are you believing? And a knocky knocky. Yeah, knock knock and. See you next time here at the Adventures Club Cryptid Talk. Mm-hmm. <laughs>